And can you briefly describe how first year of PA school is delivered at U of T? Yeah, so first year PA school, as we kind of both mentioned, is a good portion is online. So it's a mix of intensive online learning and then campus blocks where everybody comes together for a couple of weeks and it's really, really intense. You're every day um, learning something new. Um, in groups and you're practicing those hands-on clinical skills. So such as physical exam skills, um, procedure skills, and uh, things that can be observed and tested as well. And so also some patient history taking. So those are kind of the things that you learn together as an intense uh, campus block. And then the rest of the program is distributed online. So you have courses each semester that change up. Some of them are continuing, some of them are just for the semester. And you every week get uh, distributed new information to work through on your own. And then there's also some scheduled class time in addition to some group work. So either sometimes some group assignments. And then also we have, as MC mentioned, EPBL, so Electronical Problem Based uh, Learning. So that's uh, once a week, these sessions in a group where we have a new patient case every two weeks. And it's a, it's a virtual patient that we ask questions, we gain information, and we, we work through the case together. And we talk about different aspects, and then we're expected to have different uh, outcomes, like learning objectives, the second week that we work through. So if the topic was on, on one um, major kind of condition that the patient had, then that next week, we're really diving into the, the epidemiology, the path physiology, the management plan, treatment, uh, pharmacotherapy. So that's EPBL. And then um, we have our other courses as well that we go through. Um, and as I mentioned, some of them have tutorials, some of them have formal classes, but a lot of it, a lot of it is just personal um, working through the information on your own. So you have to be quite self-disciplined to do that, um, but it's so fast paced that you have um, no uh, option but to study. So. <laughs> And also what's cool quickly is that a lot, a lot of times our courses, like although like, for example, this semester we had like pathology, EPBL, um, I don't even remember at this point, like pharmacology or whatever, oftentimes they kind of, they made it in a way where it kind of crosses over. So if we're like, for example, in pathology, we're talking about genetics, then in EPBL, like we had, like our patient was a, a baby with Down syndrome. So it kind of mixes everything up together. So it really solidifies like the learning that you did throughout all your courses. And with that being said, what is the best way to stay on track and know that you are not falling behind in an online delivery model? It's a great question. So I, yeah, it's really good. It's, it's something that it's, it's, it's something you, you, you kind of have to be flexible because it does change over time. And that's something that I saw like compared to undergrad. I had one study method. I did one thing the whole time and it kind of worked for me. So I did it. But PA school is like, it's all about adjusting. And like one course, if you do one style for one course, it might not work for another course. It's really adapting um, for me. And I did my undergrad in online as well. So kind of like Hannah and her master's, I think um, when you're doing online learning, it's really about staying organized. So for me, I like that. I like really I have to do lists. I have my agenda, my paper agenda, my you know calendar, my computer. Um, it's really staying organized. So the way I did it was like on Sunday evening, for example, I would uh, open up my calendar and our all our courses are there. So I would write in my agenda all the courses we had. I would quickly go through like to see like, okay, how many lectures do we have this week? Uh, let's say in Patha, we would have 15 for two weeks. I say, okay, my objective is to do nine for this week. And I write down everything. Um, and this way I have like a big to-do list for the whole week. And then I plan day, day by day um, and kind of check it off. It's really satisfying every time you get it done. Um, so yeah, just like really like always looking into the, the course like background to see like what's happening, what's due when, when's your next exam. Like I even have like a wall calendar with like a full month where I have all my exams because they come really quickly. So to have a visual, I'm like, okay, it's coming actually two weeks. I had to start prepping for that. So it's like really managing your time and really staying organized for me was like the biggest thing on, on um, getting things done on online learning. Yeah, organization is so important for online classes. And I think it's nice because the program does release material at incremental time. So I think that's a good benchmark even, even amongst that because you know kind of where you should be at. 
I do find that students who are in the PA program in general, like we're pretty strong students. So I think if anything, sometimes it's a little too much pressure on yourself and how much to get done in a day. So I think there's a balance between um, wanting to get through everything and then being gracious with yourself um, with how much material there is and how much you need to learn in a short period of time. So I'm thankful for classmates that also help us keep each other on track. And um, it's it's really great. Before we jump into second year, I think maybe some people want to know like how things are going on, the fact that we're in a pandemic, which is really crazy. Um, so usually how U of T is delivered is that you have your first year is mostly online, but then you have several uh, in-person blocks. But because of the pandemic, that kind of changed. So usually we'd have, for example, a one month block in September, then we'd have, I think, another in like December and then April or May and we'll be like several but because of the pandemic, we just couldn't go as often, but it's really cool because our program really modified and adapted. So they kind of condensed it. So uh, for example, we weren't there in September, two weeks intensive, like what time was it? I don't remember, like eight to six nonstop. And we had to study from what, what the moment we got home to when we went to bed, um, really intensive. Um, so we do have a little, little less like in person, but I, I think like we're, they're really doing the best they can. And I, I don't think we'll be penalized. Like I think we'll be able to catch up once we enter second year. So that's a difference. We also usually have um, LCEs, which are longitudinal uh, clinical experiences, where we kind of go into clinic, I think it's half day a week, that's usually what how the program works. But unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we were not able to do that just because, um, you know, to keep patients safe, to keep us safe. And also, you know, for, so the providers can really focus on working because everyone like Anne are doing an amazing job at working in the pandemic, and we don't want to like burden them with our presence or anything. So we don't have that. So we kind of modified it and had it online instead. But the good news is, segue into this, is that second year is not affected um, by the pandemic for us. And like currently the second years are um, having their placements. So basically we have, I think it's eight placements throughout the whole year of four weeks uh, usually, so it's like family med, internal med, surgery, yeah, emergency, pediatrics, uh, psych psychiatry, um, I'm forgetting some, I think, right now, but you basically rotate through them. Um, and like Hannah said earlier, you can kind of do um, part of it in your hometown. So like, in the, for example, if you live in Toronto, you do half in Toronto, and then you can ask and have the second half um, up north. So it can be anywhere up north, like North Bay or Thunder Bay or, or whatever. Um, and your electives too, you can think about what you'd like to do those in because you get two elective rotations as well. So um, those usually come at the end of your second year. Uh, so you go through those ones first and then um, the order of the rotations are not set in stone from my understanding. They can change up a little bit. So, uh, but it's really exciting second year because you finally get to actually see and practice what you've been learning all that time. So I think it'll really solidify what we've been learning and make it seem a little bit more tangible when we can actually apply it to patient settings. And how are you graded in PA school? Is it pass fail? Do you get percentages? So we are given percentages in most of our classes. Some of them are more just kind of like you've done the assignment. Um, so just kind of like a check mark. But the majority of our classes are percentage graded and you are required to kind of uh, get a 70% on the assignments or else you have to do extra work to kind of catch up on that material. So the program does really want to see all the students succeed because they know that getting to PA school is extremely difficult and it's uh, you've shown academic excellence to get to the program and they know that you're strong students and they know it's a lot of material to learn as well. So they really wanna support you through that entire process. There's academic supports available. The class environment is no longer competitive because your classmates are working together, sharing notes, having online Jeopardy sessions to study together. So it, it's very, um, it's a, it's a nice environment. It's a, a big change from undergrad when everybody's just working towards that professional degree to get the high GPAs and apply to those programs. So I think that's a, that's something that's really special and cool about PA school. Yeah, and I would also add quickly, like I know like Hannah was saying like in undergrad, like I would want to always have like A plus, like, you know, 95 and more if I can, 90, because you are thinking about that GPA because if you are applying to PA school, you know, it's competitive or if you're thinking about med school, you know, it's competitive. But once you're in PA school, like for me anyways, like PA school for me is the end game. Like that's what I want to do. So my GPA, I, I, we're all, I don't think we're gunners though. I think we're, we're all like, we're like high, we all strive to get really good grade just because that's how we're programmed. But at the same time, it doesn't matter. Like grades don't really matter like for your like 
your file anymore. It's more that you want to absorb the information so you can use it later on with your patients. Like that's what matters now. So it's a nice shift. I find like before you're like, oh, you need that number. But now it's like, do I understand the content? Because I'll be using it later. 